Welcome to a segment of the ShiftCast. If you want to catch the full episode, you can catch that on our YouTube channel or Spotify. Let's get right into it. Final segment of the show today, speed taking. One more plug for the shift cord. Get in there, drop your takes. We'll rate your takes. Here we go. Yes, this is from Koozie. Great name. I love that. Teams that win a land should auto qual to the world championship and get to pick their Swiss round one matchup. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I, I would say at least you could do it with points. You could do it straight away, right? You could just make sure that winning a LAN is so many points yeah. that you're making it two worlds, right? That's one way to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another way would just literally say yeah. that's a qualification spot. Uh, that might take away a little bit of how RLCS wants to run the show. Sure. So I doubt that would actually happen. Um, would it be fun? Yeah, I think it would be fun. I think it is. it also brings more, which I want. I want more hype to the World Championship, mm -hmm. right? I want that to mean more than the other lands of the year, right? It needs to have something, whether it's more teams than a major, please. Whether it's a different format than a major, who knows? But also qualifying for worlds coming from a major win would be would be great to see and then picking their swiss round one matchup um that's a lot of power i don't think that matters though because what we've seen from seeding and from picking because we've had both in the past it doesn't really make a yeah. huge difference Almost turns out the same, huh? Can I yeah. can I suggest something? You can. The issue that with the draft that they did for the wild card is that mm -hmm. the top eight teams couldn't pick each other. I would be very interested to see if like a gentle mates tried to snipe a team because you can really <laughs> screw a team if if they go down to O one because they're yeah. they're playing teams at the top. I don't if think I, anyone would do it, but it would be fun. Like if if Vitaly was like Dude, that would me, be savage. Imagine you're the fourth team in the draft and you just get selected by team one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so and then they lose. If you actually beat them, then you're like sending one of your main opponents. When they win that one, that uh, one one o or o one match, they got to play a team that lost in the one o round. That's so it's like that's wild. It, that you know, it be might like actually world. happen if behind the scenes, one top eight team is losing in scrims all the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they yeah. just look come look they know like, they're a, chopped, like, like they're maybe teams, like a like army corp kind of situation yeah. where one team just always <laughs> wins. Yeah, yeah, and then, then you're thinking, ah, oh, we figured those guys out. Let's pick them. Yeah, I, I, I like what you said though, Yins, about auto qual. Auto qual sounds really nice, but then you don't. And I'm, I'm not saying these teams would try to lose, but you don't have to be consistent. Like your, yeah. your, your proposal it there, takes where the points away... are very like gentle mates are in a really good position for worlds because they won. It's like hmm. I think they're currently at seventy something, and forty of those points are from the major. That's yeah. over half of their points for the season. So, like they, it, it's essentially an auto qual. Yeah. As long as you don't just suck. Like so, this yeah, I, and I think this is probably a, a like a more balanced and healthy way to do it than than straight yeah. up auto qual. Completely qualifying them mm -hmm. it takes takes away from from the rest of the season for sure. Yeah. Especially because obviously it's going to be a top team. Yeah. That's going to not be in there anymore. But if you just give them enough points, I mean that's that's all they're asking for, right? All right, let me throw one to Michael. This is from Ty. Atomic has been the best player on G2 in Split 2. Okay, here's my thing about this one. I think he's right in terms of individual performance, but my thing is, like, I feel like we said this about Daniel last Split, and the real truth is that Beast Mode is the best player on the team, but also the player that has sacrificed his sort of individual pop-off stuff the most to, like, make sure the rest of the team works. And so I'm still hesitant to say it's Atomic because I think Beast Mode is the one that kind of... I, I'm not going to use the G word but I because I don't think that's what he does. But I think, um, I think he's been the Dude. engine. I think he's been the engine of the team. So you know I'm what's crazy? Beast Mode. What's up? I don't necessarily think you're wrong, 
but the guy is still clipping like more than anyone else. <sighs> yeah, because he's like fooling around. Like <laughs> his his willingness to do it's like Radosin almost. It's like when when you're willing to like just put your car on the line for anything, you end up doing like a bunch of silly stuff that actually yeah. works out into clips. Yeah, you find know? yourself in nice yeah. positions. Like like in that matchup against Vitality, when he was taking the ball to the ceiling every time, it wasn't to score. It was to find a teammate. Yeah. Right. And I think that's why, you know, other guys are scoring more, other uh, his teammates are scoring more, but I still think it's to be smart. Uh, but Hootie. Oh, oh. Sorry, Jens, Jens, <laughs> Jens, Jens. <laughs> I beat you to it this time. From Langley, who says OG versus Shopify Rebellion was the best online series of the season. No. It was the most entertaining, but not the best. I think the best series has to be one of those semifinal, grand final matches in Europe from split one. The level that was being displayed from those teams was just unbelievable. Um, I think you could also, which, well, actually, no, online. I was going to say the uh, KC Falcons match, but that's, that's at land. Um, if that word had not been best, if it had been entertaining, the answer would be yes. Because that was by, dude, my, I, I looked at my watch, my heart rate was 120. I, I don't, it doesn't matter. I'm not on any, either one of those teams. You know, I'm not, it doesn't matter. It was no. so, so incredibly intense. Game seven overtime tiebreaker for the major for your potential at Worlds. You can't draw it up any better than that. But was it the best? I don't think so. When I hear best, I think highest level. Yeah. BDS, you know, KC, absolute best Rocket League. And okay. I don't think that was. Mm -hmm. I was going to say. I think it was, it was a little nervy. You know, I think some of the, like, you look at that, the, the, the big miss there. Mm -hmm. from Justin as the game concludes in my mind that's not best Rocket League yeah. right and I, I understand I gonna... why it happens it's a very intense situation so I'm not trying to like hate or anything but yeah that word if it wasn't if it was entertaining not best then I would have said yes I don't think there's a single person on the planet and you know how much I love my boy Jake nobody it doesn't matter if you were a fan or not everybody in that game seven was like please god shop fire belly and please get justin to land <laughs> justin, please like the we were so London. close we didn't we weren't gonna do you know how good that would be for viewership oh it my god real. carmen corp didn't make it it's fine the biggest yeah. star we've ever produced is here back this yeah. is great and you know where did I mean? where did the star get produced that's right Ooh. In London, like, in London. come on, we we have bad script writers. We need to replace the script <laughs> writers. Script writers. How, do they, how do they write that in? That's a <laughs> terrible twist. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, and the yeah, the most entertaining series from online gameplay, bar none. I don't, even, yeah. I don't think it's close. Actually, I can't, there's no that, like, I referenced earlier in the show. I referenced the complexity space station series from a long time ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. I yeah. can't remember other series from that season because it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, yeah, that yeah. was so entertaining. And this is going to be the same way. I'm going to hold on to that for a long time because that was such an entertaining series. Okay. Well, Michael, I've, so, got, yes. I've got a long one for you. From Pendy is actually the owner of Daystar. Put a take in the shift court saying, oh, okay. double elimination calls would not be a problem for orgs if there were more tournaments for teams to play in RSS. Totally. This is a, a, a sort of a paraphrase take that was replying to another take that was that, <clears throat> well, it's not a double elimination farmer that's the problem because Smash Bros, or fighting games, I should say, always have double elimination and teams, and sorry, orgs are actually getting more involved with, with fighting FGC titles now, right? But it's not about the format altogether. I mean, the format's bad, but it's still a, a format that, that yields teams that win, which is what orgs right. are looking for, right? Right. But, you know, I think what, what Penny said specifically is that there are 36 days on your calendar that, that determine your entire investment. And if you fail, fail on the wrong one of those days, your investment's cooked. So, um... I think if there were, say, four other tournaments from, from uh, let's say we move, let's say we bump the, the World Championship up to, to August and, and, and the Esports World Cup goes down to September. If there's three more tournaments, October, November, December, that have a substantial prize pool, let's say $150,000 to $250,000, um, and, you know, big backing, you know, all the big teams are going, qualification for everybody. The esports orgs that are inevitably going to leave after the esports World Cup 
Cloud9, TSM are likely two of the of the, of the one thing with tier one orgs. Um, they're staying because they're like, hey, we, we have this investment. We have a chance to get our branding up there. Let's go to this DreamHack. Let's go to this WSOE. All the new ones that are coming in. Um, it, it's about making sure that there's more stuff to do other than the one main circuit, which is what FGC does. Uh, fighting games, there's no, there's a, I think there's one main circuit, but like mostly just kind of the, to conventions and, and grinding and same thing with Counter-Strike and, and other stuff like that. So, yes. So you agree uh, that double difference. LM is not the problem? Uh, it's not the capital T problem, but it is a lowercase a problem. Okay. Uh, Interesting. Ho- Hoodie. This one's going to hurt. This one's from GC. I'm ready to fight. I already know what you're going to throw We've at me. We've seen our last of Garrett, Garrett G. Gordon in an RLCS regional. No! Don't ever say that to me. No! This guy better not retire. I will always cheer for him. It doesn't matter if it's just to make main events. Garrett G is my idol as a professional. He has always handled himself with the utmost maturity. I think similar to JNAPS, it shows a level of you know discipline to continue uh, to continue to even pursue it. I think it's very easy to like overlook how mentally taxing being a professional can be you know being in a performance-based career um, especially when you're surrounded by such a just a volatile inter- industry so um, you know I think it shows a lot of discipline and drive to stick around and, and continue to play enough and as focused as players like Jane Epson and Garrett have to maintain a level where they can still compete professionally and I'm, I mean, he's just my favorite pro. He always has been. Um, he's one of the players that I think I just initially saw uh, finding success and, and latched onto. I think we've all probably got that player in our mind. I'm, I bet a lot of people can think of Jane Apps or Rizzo or Justin or, or whoever it was for you. Uh, but I don't. I, I I dread the day. Obviously, it will happen eventually. I dread the day that he announces his retirement and his um, you know retreat from professional play. But it better not be yet. I I don't. I, I'm not ready to face it. Yeah, I I've, I think I've told this before on on Shiftcast. But for me, going from I will not stop until I lift the trophy. I know, man. Going to mm. season eight in Madrid for the World Championship and doing it together with yeah. Justin and Turo also came in mm-hmm. to help. Yeah, he won too many things for Europe already. That was. And was I was there, front row, wow, hugging my friends when it <laughs> happened. It was just like such an emotional explosion because that was the moment everyone was waiting for. Well, you know how special it was because there were like every other pro, even the team they just beat was like, they're congratulating him. They're so happy mm. for him because they knew, like what you said, he had been grinding for so long, been trying so hard. He knocked and, his own and, glasses off. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh my gosh. Oh, what a what a moment! What that will forever stay player. with me. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Gary G, you so better GC? not. Don't ever say that again. War. All right, uh, we got one last one for Yens. Yep. I believe oh, so. that's the worst guy to ask this one, man. <laughs> this one's from Igoris. Twenty twenty five, not twenty twenty four. Next season, if there even is one, if we even survive as a race, you. A human race. It's, all, it's always a good question. Um, 2025 is the year a non NAEU team wins a major or a world championship, a RLCS line. Major. I believe the answer is yes. If Ooh. it's not this year, it Ooh. is next year. Oh. That's, nice. I mean, it is. It's happening soon. It, it I happens, mean, well, yeah. Yes, EU and NA still have some sort of grasp on the world. We've seen it in Copenhagen. But it is a very loose fist at this point. They're barely holding on. There are teams from around the world Mm -hmm. who have been challenging these European super teams, those 
North American super teams for a while now. And it's almost too long. It should be soon. If not this, then next year. That we will see a non-NA or EU team to win a major or a world. I really believe I so. It. I love it. Will it be Falcons? Yes. yes. But there are other teams <laughs> who can do it too. I was no, really, ready. I was you're really hoping. For, you're not ready for that. I was that really hoping. The, um, when, when, when Michael read it off and said 2025 is the year, I was really hoping Yen says no. It's London. <laughs> just, just right at it. Oh, I, 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 that would be a hot take, actually. That would be I, hot I take. mean, Possible, it's though. a hot take that Michael already threw out earlier in the episode, namely that Team Falcons are the team to beat. Oh, you're yeah. not ready. You're not ready for next week. My largest, hottest take is yet to come <laughs> about the major. I am welcoming it. I am looking forward to it. You're saving it for next? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. The cliff I gotta know who's at going to land first. Sure, you sure. Know. That's that's fair. right. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's we'll it. We'll hear folks. It next week then. That's right. You gotta tune in. We got all kinds <laughs> of stuff. Michael's hottest, largest take that he's ever delivered. My biggest, online. girthiest take yet. The, just craziness here. We Taking also have on. the uh, reveal of our valedictorian. Valedictorian. Next up, shift the cast. Up. Not the official shift one. I've been told to say this because our the overlords at shift will uh, terminate my contract if I make that's anything right. official. That, that's uh, right. That's how it works. But the shift cast valedictorian, the only real valedictorian, will be announced of our seven nominees. Thank you for watching this segment of the shift cast. If you want to catch the full episode, check it on our YouTube channel or on Spotify. We'll catch you next time.